Hey, it's Jeremy here from Holly Performance, and we're at a test track here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and I'm gonna show you how to do a burnout. Something like that. Safety first. Only perform burnouts in an area that's closed to pedestrians and vehicle traffic. For demonstration purposes, we'll be using only rear wheel drive vehicles today. And you don't need a posse or a spool. Two wheels may look cooler, but we see one wheel wonders doing burnouts all the time. Tip number one, wetting the tires will decrease friction and provide better performance, especially with a low horsepower vehicle. There are a few different ways to accomplish a burnout, but the most common way is to do what we call power braking. Since most vehicles don't have a line lock or trans brake, I'll demonstrate using the power brake method. If you have a late model vehicle with traction control, you'll need to disable this feature ahead of time. It can be as simple as pushing a button, or it may require you to perform a sequence of events. Check your owner's manual for complete instructions. Begin by applying firm pressure to the brake pedal with your left foot, then quickly press or mash the accelerator pedal with your right foot. Hopefully the rear wheels will break free. If not, you may have to stop and try again. On manual transmissions, it's a little more complicated. Your left foot depresses the clutch and the heel of your right foot is on the brake pedal while at the same time the toes of your right foot are on the accelerator pedal. Now slowly let the clutch out while holding the brake with your right heel and pressing on the gas with your right toe. Pretty tricky, eh? There's another way to accomplish this with a manual transmission. You'll take your left foot, depress the clutch pedal, and immediately dump the clutch. When you do this, you need to hit the accelerator and move your left foot from the clutch to the brake pedal. It's a little rough, but it gets the job done. Once you've got the tires spinning good and the vehicle is stationary, you can decrease the amount of brake pressure while still keeping the vehicle from rolling. Then fluctuate the throttle pedal to keep the tires spinning, but not so much that the engine is over revving or it's hitting the rev limiter. But higher tire speeds, usually equals more smoke. The back end of your vehicle may want to shift side to side, but you can usually correct this by simply turning the steering wheel in the same direction as the rear end of the vehicle is shifting towards. If you cannot correct it by doing this, you'll have to stop, reposition, and try the burnout again. Tire smoke is mainly about tire speed, but different rubber compounds will create more or less smoke. Old bias ply tires seem to be great for smoky burnouts. If you really get the smoke rolling, you can try shifting up to another gear. This process is a little trickier with the manual transmission though. When you can no longer see, and that big cloud of smoke looks like a clip from a Cheech and Chong movie, it's time to think about shutting it down. Or you could go big time for the crowd and spin them till they blow. To shut it down, slowly let off the brake pedal while keeping the accelerator pressed. As your vehicle starts to creep forward, wheel spin should decrease and eventually the tires will grab and launch you forward. Slowly let off the accelerator until the tires grab. If the tire spin does not decrease, this may mean that you have a condition called excessive horsepower. And that, my friends, is how you do a burnout. If you like this video, be sure and subscribe to the Holly Performance YouTube channel, where next episode, I'm gonna actually show you the ins and outs of drag racing.